Hello, dear friends, and welcome to the International Fab Talks. We are happy to share the space today with somebody unique, a young entrepreneur, a visionary who has so many credits to his list. He is none other than Mr. Senthil Kumar Murugeshan. He is joining us from Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. And friends, it's a beautiful way to bond and connect with people who are so talented. There are several other youngsters and, of course, the middle-aged people as well, wasting their time, crying over petty things. But we have people focusing on building a beautiful future for themselves and for others around. So let's welcome our special celebrity who has a lot to share with us and a lot of learning, my friends, for all of us. Hello, sir, and welcome to this beautiful session. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for this invite. I'm very glad to be part of this uh, International Fact Talks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My dear friends, it's a honor and pleasure to have our celebrity. And of course, to share his profile is really a honor for me because he has something very special for all of us. Let's keep that a secret for a minute. Dear sir, with your permission, I go ahead and share your profile. Yes, sir. Friends, I would just like you to know that our special celebrity, Mr. Senthil Kumar Murugeshan, as I earlier mentioned, he is a visionary entrepreneur and the CEO and the co-founder of GeoVO Healthcare, Save Mom Private Limited, focusing on something very beautiful. He will explain all of that in a few moments. And he belongs to Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. And he's having 13 years of special experience in the tech industry, in the technological field. He's been giving his expertise. Apart from that, he's a passionate innovator, a passionate innovator. Get that right again, my friends. You heard it correct. An innovator to invent something new and a prolific technology inventor as well. He has 10 plus granted patents to his name, to his credit, because he is an innovator and has been granted that uh, the patents to all of his creations that he has, which we, he'll be sharing with us. And I'm really eager to know all of them. I'm sure you too, my friends. A little more further down we go and try to find out. He is very passionate about innovation and he has dedicated a lot of time for technology. To solve what? Why into technology? To do what? To solve the real life problems. I repeat again, to solve the real life problems that you and I face on a daily basis. We would like to use technology and to bring a balance in our life. He is also a prolific technological inventor, as I earlier mentioned, with over 10 plus uh, patents granted to him. And he's been, you know, uh, in that special space over here on top. I really feel great when I meet people like that. And you should also feel that. Sandal began his career as an engineer at uh, Samsung. And if I can get that name right, Qualcomm, Fortune 500 companies. But he quickly realized that his true calling was entrepreneurship, to be your own boss and to do much wonders for the world. You can be really more imaginative and creative in your own space. He founded Geo Vio Healthcare Save Mom Private Limited, a health tech startup aimed at reducing maternal and infant mortality rates to reduce it because we have found many of the parents while they are expecting a baby, the mom, she faces a lot of challenges. It's a, it's a transformation in her life, her entire body and what are the risks involved, how the child could be saved, how the mother could be saved and all of that, I guess, if I'm right in the, um, understanding that, let's go ahead and find out more. My dear friends, a uh, a health tech startup aimed at reducing maternal and infant mortality rates with the help of AI, artificial intelligence enabled uh, toolkits, you could say, and telecommunication software as well. This innovation became a design thinking case study in Harvard Business School. And wow, that's really great. It's something for new to me. That's really lovely. Sandil is also a sought after speaker and has offered many guest lectures in more than 180 higher education educational institutes across India. He has been honored as one of the top five technological explorers in India by NASCOM and has won several hackathons at the national and international levels. Great. He has represented India in Battle Mesh Research Program in Europe and actively, actively engages with the open source ecosystem as one of its contributors. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. I've only shared this much. There's much more to our celebrity. And to have him today with us is really a luck. Dear sir, thank you so much because you're going to share a lot and inspire a lot of youngsters. I would like there to be many more centers across, not only in India, across the globe. 
Hello, sir, and welcome to the session. Thank you. Thanks so much. You seem so calm, yeah. polite, and down to earth, very humble, and that makes you special. People Thanks. without ego are really the special ones. If you have ego, you are nowhere, my friends. You shouldn't have ego. No matter how many achievements you have, how great an innovator you are, how great a politician you are, how great an actor you are, you should have no ego in your life. And we have a wonderful person who has achieved so much and no ego within him. Hello, sir. And we come now to the session with the main round of the interview. We would like to know who is the real center. How would you define yourself? I have shared something from my side, whatever I could lay my hands on. Who is the real you? We would like to hear it from you. Linga Yad. So basically, yeah, basically Sentil is the one who uh, understand the problems exist and uh, use technology tools uh, uh, to solve the problem. See, uh, compared to all the species, why humans are very different is uh, we are good in using tools, different tools uh, to solve our problem. Uh, other species can't do that. Like whatever is given, whatever is accessible to that, only it uses that. But human is very inter very, very intelligent uh, species because we know how to use tools. So as a sentinel, I define, I know how to use different tools and solve the problem for myself, for my community and for people around me. And I really believe that uh, as an engineer, uh, my role is like you know, uh, uh, make sure that where I was born and brought up, uh, do something, give back to them. So everyone has a different way of career path, but I define my path as like I have to give something back to uh, the community where I gained all the knowledge. And that is where motivates me to come back to Madurai after all uh, my career, everything. I come back to Madurai and do something for uh, people in, in and around Marantic Madurai. And whatever I'm doing here, take that innovation, that solution on the global scale and make sure that that solution is helpful to so many people across the globe. So I define Senthil as someone as a problem solver, especially on uh, using different technical tools, uh, he able to find solution for their own community people. That's really nice. And my friends, you could get connected with our celebrity. He is here to solve the problems that you face in the technological space. Dear sir, what inspired you to enter into the technological field to become an innovator and all of that? So when my school days itself, like you now I'm passionate to, to use uh, science, uh, mathematics, and uh, uh, this is my interesting subject. So uh, when I uh, completed my uh, plus two, one of my teacher recommended me because uh, that time I was like uh, planning to go to the you know, polytechnic uh, uh, thing. But uh, one of my teacher recommend me that uh, uh, you are very good in science and uh, in, uh, mathematics. Like you should focus on uh, engineering. You go engineering and uh, try to get job in very good company uh, and, and you could able to solve a real problem okay now what you are solving is a lab based uh, exercise you are very passionate to do that but as an engineer if you are an engineer you could able to solve the real world problem because engineers are like you know doing a lot of contribution in the society every innovation uh, the contribution of engineers is very high so one of our teacher like recommended me or suggested me to take engineering course uh, that's why i started uh, my engineering thing like uh, i was passionate on electronics so I started my engineering in electronics and communication. So during my college days, you now typically uh, we uh, get all the software company uh, as our uh, uh, job uh, because uh, in India we have a very limited number of uh, uh, electronics hardware uh, company. Uh, but I was uh, well set my profile. Like I start preparing for if I'm going for a job, which should be an electronics company where uh, whatever small uh, contribution I am doing, it should reach the billions of people. Uh, then I was decided to join a electronics company who are leader in uh, uh, mobile. That is where the uh, revolution is happening. Who are leader in all the electronics. One of the company I get to know Samsung. So in my college days, I start preparing them. Uh, basically, uh, those companies never come to my region. Like, you no, know, those companies typically come to the top uh, educational institution in the country. But I keep on preparing every time uh, uh, to get into their uh, job. Even I have experience, like, um, uh, I try to apply uh, for their job multiple times. I keep on getting the rejection. Uh, my resume even not even gets shortlisted because some... Um, uh, uh, this company only prefer higher profile and my resume never gets shortlisted. So one fine day, like, you no, know, uh, I asked a couple of Hachar, I, I want to understand uh, there are thousands of people apply for a job and how you shortlist uh, out of thousands of resume, how you shortlist 200, 300 resume and do an interview with them, like uh, what is the whole process? So the Hachar told me that, yes, we receive so many resumes. There is one software uh, script. So the script will scan all the resume and it finds certain keywords. 
if the keywords are matching then it will shortlist your resume for the human review then after human review we send a, uh, a call letter for them to attend the interview so when i see my own resume i i see that so those keywords are not at all there in my uh, resume so some of the keywords are like you know the top educational institution iit nit so uh, i even participated a lot of project presentation in those uh, iits uh, so what i thought is like i put that keyword into my resume like i participated presentation project presentation is iit so these are the keywords introduced uh, in my resume and then I, I i projected more on all my project thing what i have done other than my academy mark everything i start projecting more on my project real time uh, project what all i did during my college this those keywords uh, which is related to the company where i am planning to uh, get hired so these are the keyword i applied after the 12 the term i again send back my uh, resume to them and finally get shortlisted for the interview so when i was in the interview i i know that it is six to seven round of interview it's a big company i got some opportunity so every time uh, in the interview the interviewer typically give the uh, white a4 paper where he will ask me to write the answer of the question like you know some programming question whatever uh, he will ask me to answer so i know that there are a couple of people like me attending they're all, all talented people but the company can only sort this few people from the pool so whenever they ask me to write uh, the programming so instead of writing in the pen and paper i'll take the marker and go to the whiteboard so in front of him i'll i'll write that uh, answer so why i have done it like he is going to attack uh, that interviewing more people so when those people are answering it my answer is sitting in front of him so he could able to compare me with every individual and he could able to assess me better so this is a different way i approach the interview and uh, finally get uh, get into the company and uh, one of the reason why i want to work on such a product based uh, uh, top electronic company is um, i'll get a opportunity to do patent filing because typically uh, all the service company we call it india is basically a service market so we all do a lot of service job for the western customer like a, a western customer have some requirement and from india we will do the uh, service job and we will be paid for that but uh, the, the disadvantage in a service company is you never get a chance to file patents uh, there is no incentive there is no because you you are doing services like you, you you never end up doing patent filing but working in a product company allows you to come up with your innovation file a patent on that innovation and your innovation you can see so i have good experience that every product we develop in a six month time frame it will be in the tv ads so it will say hey this is a new phone we are releasing with all this new feature and i can tell my parents that these are the feature i worked on it like you know now you are going to use it so that level of you know uh, uh, confident you will get like you know because whatever you are doing you see millions of people suddenly using uh, your innovation on the hand and really helping them in their day to day life so that's what motivate me uh, to be a electronics uh, engineer passionate to do that and i'm keep on uh, doing that that's really interesting very interesting yeah thank you yeah, it amazes me like you know it really feels great to have people like that who's contributing so much that's really nice sir. and not to give up to keep trying and you will definitely reach your goal so who inspired you into this uh, there are a lot of people yeah there are a lot of people of course the first inspiration will come from your parents uh, especially your mom and dad Uh, uh one of the reason i very much attached to my hometown is because of my dad uh, because uh, in my childhood like you no know, he will tell me keep on tell me that uh, you should contribute back to madurai okay typically everyone after completing a graduation they all move on uh, they they will be in a smaller town for education and then for a job they'll move to the uh, bigger cities and for better career opportunity they move out of the country this is the traditional path but my father is the one who continuously insisting me and telling the culture of the madurai and uh, you know what you, you can do so many contribution back to the city so he is my one of the first inspiration and uh, i like abdul kalam uh, because of you know he he is one of the well proven uh, scientist in the country he got so many opportunity to move out of the country but some in something like you know he want to retain contribute back and, and he is very simple like you know after achieving so many things uh, i get a chance to interact with them so with him like you know uh, he is very very simple very humble i learned that thing from him like you know after achieving so many things uh, how he is very humble like you know he is reachable approachable to every person like you no know, 
that, that really inspired me uh, that even if I grow any level, I should be approachable to anyone. That, that is the core part because uh, that adds more value other than what you were uh, innovation, everything. Uh, if you're able to uh, approachable to anyone, if you're able to inspire others, uh, that is what the good contribution you are giving back because uh, he might have moved out of the country for better opportunity because that time... Uh, across the world inviting him like you know to even in india he might have a very limited budget limited uh, you know uh, scope of doing a lot of uh innovation but he was somehow stick to that like you no know, he say okay this is my country and this is what i'm contributing i'm not going to blame the system because whenever he come up with a, a new idea a new program like uh, there might be a budget constraint and the politicians say we can't allocate the budget so many things ha might happen for him but he is not frustrated he adjusted the system and he was gone through the system and able to do right now all our space research like you know atomic thing we have achieved so many things uh, because of him so that uh, really inspired me uh, because that is one of the core motivation and he's also from a smaller town like Ramishwar. Uh, it is like tier 3, tier 4 uh, town. So if he is able to do it from there, like, you know, then that motivates me because people ask me that uh, uh, sitting in Madurai, you may lose a lot of opportunity because Madurai is a tier 2 town. Like what you will get from Madurai, you know, never get a lot of opportunity. But if I feel like if he is able to do it from a smaller town like Ramishwar and he able to uh, create that impact. Still, I'm able to do it in a, a smaller town like Madurai. It, it not, does not require that the innovation has to be done in the bigger city. So, uh, so that is my motivation. So I always get inspired uh, with these people. That's really great. Your father and uh, Abdul Kalam sir have been great motivational, uh, you know, forces behind your success that you are today. And uh, what I like about you, sir, is being very humble and talking about humility, talking about no ego to be approachable like abdul kalam sir also was approachable to everyone he spoke with all the children i could see how he communicated with all of them so yes dear friends that's a beautiful way to connect connect with everyone so and and one more thing i want to add why i'm mentioning about the sambal part is like a, uh in my school days basically i'm not that super duper student i'm very normal student uh but some of my friend okay there might be any uh first rank holder okay so some of my friend like you know uh, they will go and reach out to him to get some help uh, you know some some explanation better explain some help always this top topper people are like you no know, very not approachable they say i'm intelligent like i can't teach you uh, because i'm i'm intelligent i'm a topper of the school so my friend motivated that Sentil, you have to beat that guy like you should be the topper okay because i keep on uh, whatever i know i will explain them they keep on motivate me that uh, you get that first rank like you know so that he realize it and uh, that continuously motivates me like you know by because uh, i'm not that talented because People are around me, motivating me because uh, so that uh, you should, you prove that you and you, as a topper, you should be reachable. You should be like talking to everyone. You should be sharing your knowledge. You just put a role model for everyone so that other classes topper also will follow you tomorrow. So this has happened in my school days itself. Like that is how I suddenly become a topper in my all school. I really don't know. I have that talent, but a lot of people trusting you because of you are easy to approachable then the talent is automatically coming. Like uh, uh, when so many people are hoping on you to su get succeed and you get that talent. So I feel that wherever you are, whatever talent you, you have, if that is translatable to other people, that is where it adds value. Keeping your knowledge with you does not add any value to that. And humbleness is allow other people to think, okay, he is a big guy. Should I go and ask? You never create that particular perception around people. You should be very humble. I, I learned from uh, Sir Abdul Kalam, like, you know, how humble he is. And uh, any anyone, like, you know, not even a even school student can take a mic and talk to him, like, go. So that level of humbleness, if a president of the country has, then we are all nothing. Like, we should follow uh, uh, his side. Perfect. Perfect. I really like the way you put it. Very well explained, sir. Thank you very much. It makes sense. And the way your friends, you know, made you, encouraged you to become the topper and the role model. Yeah. Yes. And to be yes. approachable as you help others to, to study and share with them your knowledge. That's really nice. And of course, Abdul Kalam, sir, has been a great inspiration to all of us. Dear sir, a big question now. I would like to ask you about your entrepreneurial journey. What is Save Mom? And how did this new innovation start 
and uh, who you want to reach out to and what is the story behind that? So when I worked in a company, like, you know, uh, this idea came from my, when my sister was pregnant. So I come to know that uh, uh, typically if you go to any hospital, uh, all the pregnant mother has to wait five to six hours in the hospital. Okay. Even if they book an appointment or not, uh, they have to wait a longer time. So, uh, so I went to the hospital and realized why it takes so much of time in the hospital. I, I realized that um, whenever the patient comes, uh, there's a, a nurses who use five to six different devices like BP monitor, uh, temperature monitor, like di different devices and uh, measuring the vital of the mother and uh, note down all the vital in the paper and pen. So on an average, it takes 10 minutes per woman, like per patient take 10 minutes. That means maximum uh, they can do six to 10 mother in an hour window. So if uh, 50 people are there, they have to wait minimum five hours to, to get their consulting. So my idea is, can I develop a technology where in a one minute time frame, that device, what I'm, I have developed, it can capture all the vital parameter and digitally transfer this data to the doctor's uh, portal in front of a doctor. When a patient is doing checkup, it should be available for the doctor and it should take less than one minute time. If I'm able to achieve that, I could be able to make this five hour waiting time to less than one and a half hour, two hour waiting time for the mother. And I able to uh, manage the queuing better. I can tell the mother, hey, already 30 people are in the hospital. You start off half an hour later so that you don't need to go and wait in the hospital. So this is how the Save Mom initiative initially started. Uh, then I see that a lot of women started liking my solution. And there's an application also have built uh, every actionable item I inform to the husband. Because some of the Indian women know they they feel like I'm disturbing my husband. I don't want to uh, disturb him. He might be busy. So so that's a perception they have. So what I have done is I built a technology. I notify every actionable item when they have to go for a checkup. What kind of a nutrition they need to take? Okay, at what this trimester? What kind of symptom they have? They may have a lot of vomiting skill, uh, vomiting sensation. So this is a nutrition you can provide. So that educational thing I started providing to a lot of husband. So this helps a pregnant woman that now your doctor is digitally connected to you and every actionable item you don't need to even tell your husband husband already notified so there are two people to support you to have a personalized happy uh, pregnancy experience so this is where our idea save mom uh, started uh it was so successful uh, uh initially then uh, what i thought is like um, I did a lot of research to understand the maternal and child scenario in India. And I come to know that uh, a country like India, we have a uh, highest maternal mortality rate, uh, uh, especially in the tribal community. Uh, one of the reason is um, uh, the tribal pregnant woman, they have to travel 20 kilometers to reach the nearest hospital, the primary healthcare center. So in the travel, 8 kilometers, they have to hike in the mountain. And then another 12 kilometers, they'll take some shared auto uh, to reach the hospital there they have to wait almost six to eight hours of time so here the husband is mostly a daily wages he feels that the one day salary is gone because of the checkup due to that most of the pregnant woman is not having this regular uh, checkup in the hospital so my idea is um, if the mother is not coming to the hospital now we have a technology why can't we bring this technology to their home and do the checkup everything in the home and connect the doctor digitally to the teleconsultation platform and whatever prescription or uh, lab thing they are required, the health worker can provide it, like prescription they can pro provide to them. If a doctor find to do some blood test or urine test, the nurse can get the samples, come back to their uh, hospital, do a test, upload the report to our portal. And then based on the report, again, distribute the nutrition uh, prescription to the mother. So this is ensure that if the mother is not coming to the hospital, they are getting care in the doorstep itself. If they are coming to the hospital, they don't need to wait for the whole day in the hospital. It is one or two hour maximum. They can get a consulting and move on to their home. So this is a model, the main Save Mom initiative uh, we have done. And we deployed it to a lot of uh, uh, tribal community. Uh, almost like uh, uh, 36,000 plus women, uh, we provided uh, this care and we built a smart wearable device to monitor the mother closely because every month the checkup is happening. In between the month, whatever happening on their health, we really don't know. So we have developed a, a device. The device can wear to the mother's wrist and uh, the device can capture all the mother's activity, all the data. 
and every month it will store the data and show to the doctor hey today check up these are the vitals the entire month this is how the vitals went okay and this is her health score so the ai artificial intelligence can assess the health score and tell this mother might be in the high risk this mother might be in the low risk like that it can classify and provide more personalized care for the pregnant mother and post delivery what we have done is the same technology we transfer the device to the uh, baby and it start monitoring the baby for the next to two year time frame so we monitor baby having a proper vaccination or not our uh, baby is having proper growth parameter like head and weight everything having proper uh, growth and baby is achieving a lot of milestones like you no know, handshake uh, scrolling all the milestone at the right time if there is any delay the health worker is notified and doctor is notified and there's a proper follow up mechanism for them and other than that every district collector we built a nice decision support system now the district collector can open the portal and he can see all the pregnant women in their particular district what is the health condition how many of the mother is high risk those high risk mother is getting a nutrition or not if they are not getting the checkup then that will be escalated to the uh, district official so this helps the district collector to ensure that no death is happening in the district for the mother or child or all the mother have a safer uh, pregnancy experience so this is a technology as a same mom we built it's a ai powered uh, uh, technology and very useful to lot of uh, uh, pregnant women and we are aggressively deploying uh, everywhere in the country yes that's really unique so that's really very nice i like the way you focused on the tribal community the people the mothers who can't expecting mothers who can't come down to the hospitals it takes a long time maybe 20 kilometers as you said and to have it at their doorstep all of that that's really very nice my question here is is the government with you is the government supporting you in this beautiful cause that you, or this innovation yeah see when i interacted with the government one of the thing government uh, tell us is like uh, see we have a lot of problem but you engineers never come and work with us you engineer always move out of us the long distance and people will still complain the government government is not one person or one person is a government government is everyone so if you engineers come and support us then we could able to provide better services to the citizen okay uh, this is where i interacted with ias officer they told we like engineers like you to solve our problem we have a fund we have a nutrition program we have every scheme but as a district collector i can't go to every village and see is this mother is getting a care this mother is getting a care i can't do manually i have so many other work but if you buy this tool sitting from the district collector office i can have a complete dashboard view and i could i could able to assess if there any mother is missing i can inform the particular department to take a necessary action if their department is not taking any, any action if the portal is remind me or notify me then i can define certain policy to ensure every mother getting proper care so government really liking our innovation uh, because they they want to have such a innovative tool to provide better health delivery for their uh, citizen that is why all the four state we are working they are very supportive and uh, they are really supporting the project for the deployment and scalability of uh, this project yes sir that's really nice to know sir excellent sir that's really nice now i my another question in my head is like is it accessible to all the states in india Uh, we are going one state at a time uh, uh, so we started with uh, kerala tamil nadu like one state at a time right now we are going uh, uh, we hope that like in upcoming years we cover all the 28 uh, state and union territory in the country yes that's really nice and another question has popped up now should they pay any amount or is it for free should they be giving some type of amount is there any monetary yeah. Uh, yeah in- yeah basically government already have a, a, a financial support system for the pregnant mother like state government uh, from the pradhama mantri yojana scheme every pregnant mother get 5000 rupees uh, uh, if they are enrolled into the system and uh, this is from the state central government and state government has own specific scheme so our financial uh, business model works on getting a small portion from this uh, financial support and we are ensuring that mother data is digitized and they have all the care and nutrition is delivered so we could able to get our fee uh, uh, our fee from this particular budget so it allows government does not need to allocate a separate budget for our project it is already existing budget uh, we are ensuring that uh, the budget the financial support really reaching the end uh, mother yeah. and we are getting the paid for that particular service 
That's really nice. Very nice. I'm happy to know that, sir. What about the other patents that you ha have to your credit? You have 10 plus. Yes. This is just one. And what about the others? Who so so uh, uh, basically this, no, not a one, almost six to seven pattern will cover on this particular technology. Uh, uh, one of the thing I want to say, like um, uh, uh, initially when we designed this wearable device, uh, the wearable device uh, uh, look like a, a gold color bracelet. So we thought any Indian woman like bracelets, uh, especially gold color bracelet. So when we deployed the device, we are analyzing the data coming from the device. And the data looks weird. Um, it does not have a fetal heart rate and uh, uh, it does not have uh, uh, the activity level. It sees almost uh, one lakh steps in a day. And we are wondering why this mother is jogging too much. Like, you no, know, she's doing a lot of work. Almost she's in the eighth month. Uh, so she's uh, in the third trimester. She's stressing a lot. So we thought of going to her home, educate the family that she's going to deliver in a month. So don't make her to work hard. Like, no, she has to do proper rest. So when we are uh, with her home and uh, we found that uh, uh, she is not at all having that uh, bracelet what we gave it to her. So we asked her, did you lost the device or where it went? And she told me that, uh, sir, the device is safe. Uh, my husband told that uh, I am going outside to so give the smartwatch to me. So the husband took the watch from the device from her and the husband is typically going in the base and carrying something to the mountain every day to like so many iteration. That's why the steps counts are very high. And uh, so whatever data we collected is actually husband data does not have enough pregnancy information. That's why our algorithm is keep on alerting it. Then uh, there's another woman we interacted with her and she told uh, uh, this device is so luxury. Uh, if I wear this device, everyone in my community is looking at my wrist. So I was annoyed. Like I don't want to wear it when I'm outside. So I only wear the device inside the home. Outside, I don't wear the device. So here, it's not a husband problem. It's more on a cultural problem because the technology is beautiful, but that is not helpful for them because they are not wearing it. So my challenge is, is like, I want to come up with an idea. I need to des design a device or wearable where the husband don't want to wear so what I can, I can do that. And then I analyzed what is the one thing which the husband don't want to wear. Then I come to know that no husband want to wear Mangal shoot. Okay. Mangal shoot is only the uh, girl ladies will wear. So I designed my product, which can be attachable to any Mangal shoot. So, uh, so we will attach that particular device to the Mangal shoot. Now it start monitoring the mother and husband don't want to take that Mangal shoot and wear it. So this is a hack we have done. And it made a very successful uh, thing. And we ensured that all the data is really coming from a pregnant woman. So after the delivery, the same device will be transferred to the babies. Uh, there's a black color thread. They will put it on the newborn baby. Yes. So we attach this device to that black color thread and it start monitoring the baby for the next uh, uh, two year uh, time frame. So our one of the core innovation is um, if you see all the smart watches or smart uh, thing, you need to continuously recharge it. Every two days once you have to put it on the charger and you have to use it back. Uh, I can't ask the same thing to the pregnant mother. Hey, you have to recharge it. And they say, I don't even have electricity where I'll go and recharge it. So again, my project will fail. So I have done an innovation on the battery component. I made a battery technology such a way that the wearable device can withstand for six to nine months of battery life. So when I give it to the mother, Till the delivery, they don't need to recharge it. Once the delivery happened, there's a small battery cells. It can be replaced and transferred to the baby. So babies, the six months completed, then again, that can be transferred. So like that, I provided uh, the wearable. That is our core innovation. So one, one pattern on this technology. And another one is the medical device I, I built. I, I will show the device. So this is a device I built. So uh, when I when I working with a lot of health worker, one thing I, I find that uh, they typically carry all the medical device, ECG machine, BP machine, everything in the back, and they carry the back to their home for the delivery. See, if it is in a hospital, the device are ideally sitting in the hospital. Patients are coming, doing a checkup. When I'm introducing a home-based uh, antenatal checkup, now the health worker has to carry all the devices in the back, in the shoulder. They have to walk to all their uh, home. Then I did myself, I carried that bag. I find it is very painful, it's very heavy. So I asked this health worker, if I design something uh, where it do all the vital capture, but it is small, you can put it on your purse like a mobile phone. If I do something like that, will it be helpful to you? 
the health worker told me that, sir, if the size is small, I can visit more number of pregnant mother in a day because I can walk faster and uh, I can do more a number. And another thing, I want a de uh, device which is very easy to use. Then I designed this product. It has sensors everywhere. And using is very simple. You just need to put it like this, like this, and put it like this in the forehead. It take your body temperature, SpO2, and it has this metal plate, which is same like your ECG patch, but the patch is attached here. So it, it can take your ECG, and this is a small strip where you can prick your blood, place it inside to measure your blood sugar. So all the parameter, one devices, very, very easy to use. They don't need any external training, putting one device, second device, third device, like that. It's all one device, capture everything and transfer this data to the mobile phone or a doctor application directly. And another innovation, what we have done is, example, we are having a video call with the doctor and patient. And in the video call, the patient is saying, doctor, I have a breathing problem. I'm not able to breathe. But in a video call, doctor really don't know what is the cause. Like he can't, he don't know what is the breathing rate, what is the saturation level. If it is an in-person meeting, in-person call with the doctor, doctor can put me a SPO2 monitor or a stethoscope to find my breathing rate and provide better consulting to me. But video call, doctor don't get these vitals. So mostly the teleconsultation call, either a secondary consultation, just basic consultation they can provide. So what I have enabled is with this innovation. Now, when the patient is having a video call, I, I'll ask the patient to hold this. Uh, if a patient says, I have a breathing problem, the doctor from the portal, they can request, I want live SPO2 breathing rate of this particular person. From the device using 5G technology, in real time, the data will be shown to me. So in the video call, one side is my video, another side, all my ECG, vitals, BP, every value is in a real time, it's coming. Now it allow the doctor and patient to have an in-person experience over the video call. This is our another innovation uh, we have done. And uh, then one more innovation we did is like our AI. Uh, when I have done this project, uh, end of the day, the doctor will see all the patient, give a feedback to the patient. One of the doctor told me that uh, Santil, I typically see maximum 20 to 40 pregnant mother in a month, one month period, only 30 to 40 mother will come to my PHC and visit. After your technology deployment, now I need to see 200 plus pregnant mother in the port because your technology enable everyone to get the access. Now I have to see 200 mother. As a one person, I can't go through all the 200 mother and immediately give a feedback to them. That is very difficult. Then I told the doctor, doctor, uh, you tell me how you are seeing all this data and saying, hey, these are the mother who need attention. These are the mother is normal. You just tell me that I will build an artificial intelligent doctor. Okay, this doctor is sitting between you and the nurse, health worker. So what this doctor, AI doctor will do is, when the 200 mother data comes, it will go through all the data exactly like you and it will classify the high risk mother and low risk mother. So the 40 high risk mother will be shown to you in the portal. Now you can go through this 40 mother who need an immediate emergency attention. You can go through it, give a feedback and remaining 160 plus mother, whenever you get a time, you will review it. So every time you are reviewing it, the AI also learn from you continuously and to improve it accuracy. So one of the pattern is on this AI uh, technology. So like that we have uh, filed another, another pattern. Our innovation is um, we find all the high risk mother. And uh, I went to the district uh, people like, uh, sir, all the mother, we are giving a standardized nutrition to everyone. Everyone is getting the pack of standard nutrition. But after giving all the nutrition also, there is no progress in the health. So what we can do is uh, uh, we will provide some personalized nutrition. Example, if the mother is anemic, we will give iron rich nutrition so that anemic can be reversed. If a mother is hypertension based uh, risk pattern, then we will provide a nutrition which is low in protein because protein can increase the hypertension. If a mother is uh, diabetics, we will provide a nutrition which is lesser in sugar content. Like that, we can customize the nutrition and provide to the mother. So they agreed. So we providing the nutrition. After giving all the nutrition, there is no progress. Still the high risk mother is a high risk mother. So when I was in their home, I found that whatever nutrition we are giving, uh, they are mixing that nutrition in the water and giving to the cow and goat in their home. Oh my God. They are not taking that nutrition. And I was shocked to see this. And then I asked the woman, 
uh, this is given to you and your baby, but I don't know why you are giving to the cow. And very innocently, she told, sir, if I give it to the cow, the cow can give more milk and we can make additional money. So whenever I get this pack from the government, I'll put it on the cow. So the cow will start giving more milk. So I realized that like uh, this nutrition is not going to them. It is going to the cow. So, and we come up with a new way of uh, nutrition delivery model. So whenever we give a nutrition, we split it into two components. One is the normal packet. Another one is a dehydrated powder kind of a nutrition. I told the health worker, after you complete your home checkup, uh, give this packet to them. Anyway, this packet is going to the cow. Okay. Another nutrition, you will mix it on the pregnant mother drinking water. So there's a small part where she is drinking water. So you mix it on that water and add some kind of a neem taste in that. So the family don't touch the water and inform that you take the water from here. So this is a hack I did. And one fine day, I got a call from the doctor that... Uh, Sendil, you guys did some something. Suddenly, everyone high risk pattern is start disappearing. And all the mother is getting 300 to 500 gram weight gain. So all the anemic mother, anemic problem is going away. So then I told the doctor, doctor, now we hacked the water. Now they are drinking only highly nutrition rich water. That is why we able to reverse it. Because I learned that they are giving a nutrition to the cow through the water. Why we can apply the same concept to give it to the pregnant mother and that model really worked. And this model now become one of the case study everywhere. Even a lot of uh, big organizations, they are struggling on nutrition supply. And now uh, we got some award from World Health Organization that this is a very unique way of supplying nutrition through water. No one even thought about uh, this one. I, I have to thank the pregnant mother who uh, opened up my eye on how she is giving a nutrition to the cow. So I applied the same concept here. So that is one of the another pattern uh, we filed. So like that, like, you know, six to seven pattern we covered on the same home innovation itself. Yeah. You're somebody magical, sir. <laughs> no, uh, the thing is like, you know, I, I, I see like, you know, as an engineer, you don't need to solve the problem. You just listen to your customer. They will tell what solution they want. You just need to connect the dot. For all these use cases, the pregnant mother told me they need something cultural. Like, you know, uh, the, they, they told me that uh, my husband don't wear mongrel. So then I strike, okay, then I design like that. And the health worker told me that you designed it small form factor, I can visit more mother. So basically the customer is telling what they want. As an engineer, you just need to connect the dot. Uh, typically what we engineer do is we think we are very smart people. How can we listen to you? Like I, I am engineer, I am smart. I know so many ideas, how I can listen to your feedback. This is the attitude we typically have. That's why our innovation is never useful to the real customer. All beautiful innovation sits ideally in a research paper, never con converted into the commercially deployable project. We have so many patterns, so many technology, it's all in online as a research paper, never get commercialized. So the commercialization only happen when as an engineer start listening to the customer, like what exactly they want, Build for that and then the commercialization will happen. Your innovation is not sitting in the laboratory. It is in the people's hand. So I learned from all this tribals. Uh... That's really nice. Very, very nice. Very um, amazing session this is to get to know all of this. And like for me, I am lost into this world of so much of innovation that you've been able to do all of this. It's really great. It really amazes me. Thank and you know, I'm still like lost and floating like it's... <laughs> Like, how could you be able to give your time, so much of time? How much of time do you spend with all of this? And and I have another question, sir. Apart, you first answer this, like time. How do you yeah. manage your time and balance such that I go with the next question? Uh, basically, when I started, I was completely dedicated one year of time. Okay, I'm going to this tribal. I'm going to save every mother here. And uh, this is my goal. So there are so many challenges. Like every iteration, they say this won't work, you go back. Every iteration, it will be like that. But somehow I'll figure out a way to uh, solve it. Uh, one of the things which really motivated me is after all the pilot, uh, there is a uh, the baby girl born in the particular village. So they invited me. Uh, said, uh, sir, like you should come to the village because uh, there is a newborn baby. Uh, you should come and see that. So I went to that village. I see almost 120 plus people in front of the primary health healthcare center. And I was surprising what happened is something happened to the baby or mother. Like why so many people gathered? So I went to that and I witnessed a lot of people carrying a newborn baby, one hand to other hand and other hand to other hand, like that baby is transferred. 
I was wondering what happened to the lady, like, you no, know, because we done this project. And, and the, the pregnant woman mom, she just came to me and gave that baby to me. And she told that, uh, sir, this is the first time in our village, after so many centuries, we able to feel the weight of the baby. The baby is 3.1 kg weight. And we never ever seen a smiling baby after delivery. And all the people in the village literally enjoying to carry the baby. That's why they're seeing smiley and happy babies. And uh, even as an engineer, I hold the baby. I see, I built so many technologies. It's always inside the computer, which I can't touch it. And this is the first time I'm able to touch and feel and it's smiling in front of me. So I find small tool, what we built, the impact it's creating on the end community. So I felt it like very touchable thing. Like, you know, that motivates me. Every time I was in the low of my period, I think about this. So small dots we connected, but how much impact it's creating. Even the woman, she told me that um, uh, her sister and all, they have very complicated delivery experience. Uh, now she's able to recover fast because of the nutrition we provided. Uh, within one or two days, he back to the home doing all the other activity. Uh, see, felt like you know, my sister experienced very bad uh, pregnancy thing, but I was so lucky to have uh, this normal delivery and uh, safer uh, delivery. And I'm, I'm happy to see my healthy baby. So this is the impact it created. So that keep on made to motivate me. It started from one mother, now almost 36 mother. We done this iteration. So happy for that. Yes, that's really beautiful and very interesting. So have any of the companies, the private companies, have they approached you on your innovations? And like, you know, there's something like that. Once they get to know your innovation, they would like to come and bond with you and connect. And maybe there could be some discussion to commercialize it on a larger scale. Did any of the companies make an attempt? No, we started our own company. We started our own company. Currently, we are commercializing uh, with ourselves. And uh, mainly we work with the hospital uh, network. And a couple of companies, uh, now there are a lot of companies reaching across the globe, especially in the African region, Indonesia, basically they call Global South. So all the companies from this region is uh, reaching out to us. So we are figuring out a collaborative model uh, because we want to ensure that the technology is safely transferred to that country. Uh, we are working with the state, uh, that particular company and the government on the expansion. But our focus right now is in India. Because India itself a very huge uh, market. I just covered four states, still 20, 26 plus uh, states are still there. So my current focus is more on India. I need to complete this journey first. Uh, then we go with other uh, partners for the global expansion. Yes. And that's really beautiful. Thank you. Like focusing on India, there are many states still in India to uh, access this beautiful innovation of yours. That's really nice. What about Harvard? Like I read something like Harvard... Could you just yeah. share something? I'll just keep it at Harvard and share. Then put it on you now. You have to share everything. Yeah. So we all know uh, Harvard Business School is one of the premium institution in the world. Uh, typically, they do a case study on the very, very successful business in the world. And uh, most of the MBAs who are coming out of Harvard, uh, they learn this case study. Okay. Because these MBAs are go to the CEO of the big top companies, so Fortunate 500 company. After graduating from the Harvard, like they all go to the uh, Fortunate 500 company. One of the motivation for us to uh, work with the Harvard Business School is like, um, uh, when I go with this idea to a lot of investors, like you know, a lot of business people, they always think that uh, this is some social impact. Uh, this is some kind of uh, uh, rural people are very poor. They don't pay. This is what the perception it's all NGO thing. Like, what is the real business we can build? See, the people mindset is uh, poor people don't pay. Poor people want everything free. This is a mindset. One of the things we want to go to the Harvard uh, is telling the world that if you build a real valuable technology to the uh, rural people, they are ready to pay. Currently, my customers are ready paying me. One of the reasons they are telling me that Sir, if I want to go to a hospital physically, there is a travel. I'll spend 50 to 100 rupees for my travel. And there's a long waiting time where I lose 300 rupees of wages. Okay. With your technology, if I'm getting all the care on my doorstep, my expenses is very less. I don't need to spend 400 rupees. I am ready to spend 100 rupees for you. In that four, instead of 400, now you're only asking me to pay 100 rupees. I am happy to pay the 100 rupees. Okay. That is why my model is very successful. I just charge 1000 rupees, provide 1000 day care for the mother and baby. And they are so happy to pay that amount from their pocket. So they are saying that 
you are helping me to reduce all other expenses. Example, if a complication happen, then I have to expend. There is expenses on the complicated delivery, follow-up checkup is higher for me. Okay, I can't depend everywhere government. I may sometimes go to the private also. So this is all the transport itself a big expenses for us. If you're able to solve that problem, then why why not we pay for it? Okay. So we have demonstrated that people in the rural India is not poor. Okay. They have less access to all the technology. That is the only thing. They are whatever money they are making, that is far, far sufficient for their livelihood. Okay, we are compa comparing people from a per capsha basis, like you know, this many dollars, if we make per day, then you are rich. But there, in their lifestyle, that money is sufficient for them. Okay, what we have proven the model is, people are paying it. This is not a social thing. This is not an NGO activity. This is a real commercial business we are doing for the people in the rural. And that become a case study. So one of the things is, uh, uh, like tomorrow, all these MBA people who study our case study in Harvard, and when the company decided, okay, can we deploy our product or innovation in the uh, rural India? And they can tell that, yes, someone can say, no, rural India, no one will buy our product. Okay, now they can refer, no, I done some case study. I know that there is a guy who built and proven that people in rural also pay if you are really solving the problem. So we can bring our innovation, our product to the rural places. So that is what the motivated us. I even like a, a geo model because the... Uh, in Geo, like Reliance Geo, they provide same quality internet, same bandwidth, same uh, cost for the people who are living in the tribal village and the people who are living in the upper uh, class of Mumbai's uh, core area. Both are get same internet, same speed, same cost. Okay, and they have proven because their market share is almost 60-70% in the country, 50% is actually coming from tier 2, tier 3 town. Okay, that's why they become a leader in telecom because they build a technology, make it accessible to everyone equally, irrespective of their location. So these are the another like you know valuable case study someone is doing. So our motivation of being a case study in Harvard is encouraging every businesses don't assume it, don't assume that uh, tier two people don't pay, don't assume that tier two people don't use innovative product. It's all your assumption. There are big companies proven the model is wrong. People pay if you are providing some valuable services to them. That is what motivates us. And we are very happy to become a case study in Harvard business. Congratulations on that. Congratulations. That's really very nice. Very inspiring. Thank you. Yes. So, now what is the latest invention on your mind now, apart from this? What's the latest one? If you'd like to reveal it or it's going to be a secret. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working for a couple of months. So I recently uh, 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 delivered a baby girl. Uh, so one of the challenge I see is like, uh, uh, typically these uh, babies, newborn babies, uh, cry at the night time, mid of the night, suddenly start crying. So the newborn, new mothers, it's very challenging because they really don't know why the baby is crying. So they suddenly start feeding them. Again, the baby crying continuously. And mid of the night, we ex I experienced it along with my wife. So mid of the night, every family member get panicked. They will run to the hospital. Say, why baby is crying? So I started doing a lot of research on that. And then I come to know that in the world, all the babies, all the newborn baby is crying for maximum five pattern. Okay. First is hungry. Second is their upper digestive system there is a congestion third crying pattern is the lower digestive system there is a congestion fourth crying pattern is they want to sleep but there are some disturbance they could not be able to sleep and fifth problem is there is some mosquito or some inside like bite at them there is a reason so this is the five way all the baby in the world rich poor whatever it is cry on the same way so as an engineer what i have done is i built an ai model Okay, so I told my wife, whenever the baby is crying, you just record the voice sample. Now the AI can analyze this pattern and it will tell in a regional language with the baby voice saying that, mom, I am want to sleep, but the light is on. Can you please turn off the light so that I go and sleep? So this message is communicated to the mom. So mom don't go and feed her because she don't want, she's not hungry, but again, feeding her will make her cry more. So this is the innovation, the AI model we are building. And if the baby is uh, some problem in the digestive system, again, you don't need to feed her the milk. 
Okay, now you can say like you can do certain uh, certain things uh, uh, to make sure that baby, so certain position you can put the baby in the sleep so the digestive system, everything will work. So these are the information I'm giving to the uh, uh, new uh, new moms, like, you know, uh, how they can handle the baby crying pattern. And uh, yeah, this is AI, my new innovation, I'm doing it. So it I worked for my it. baby. I hope uh, it'll work for everyone, baby. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let it be a secret now. Don't let it out. Let it be materialized completely. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. In wraps. That's really nice. Yeah. yeah, we are we are training with so many baby pattern. We are working with a lot of uh, newborn babies. Or we are capturing all this uh, crying pattern because the AI need massive data to train it. So currently we are training uh, with that. So this is one of my core innovation. Another pain point right now I'm facing is how to make my baby to sleep. That is another pain point. We have to like it's it's a very challenging for newborn one. So I'm I'm working on certain spectral frequency which make the baby to sleep. So I'm working on that particular spectral frequency, uh, which allows the baby for a faster sleep pattern. So this is another AI research. I am working on it. Yes, sir. That's really nice. And yes, you have to keep it a secret. You shouldn't let it out. That's so easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's really nice. You're very humble, as I said. Yeah. You're very no, humble. no, for me, like for me, like I don't want to own it myself. If someone like see this video and they also put the effort to solve, end of the day, the problem is solved, right? Who is solving does not matter, right? Like uh, end of the day, the problem is solved. Someone sees this video and see. Uh, that's why one of the I can I can stop on the first part. Why I have introduced the sleeping pattern is so many newborn moms are struggling on how they really don't know how to make their baby to sleep. So someone see this video and see, okay, I will focus on this. I'll start working. I'll build technology to make the baby for early sleep, faster sleep. So many moms really like it. If we build technology for that, because I'm trying to solve all this mom, new mom uh, problems, uh, because they are very challenging. Being a mom is very challenging. So if we, somehow the technology can help them, uh, they are happy to get it. That's really nice. What a beautiful uh, thought process you have and hats off to you for that. Because I was saying like, let it be a secret. Let, I mean, let it be only confined to you and your thoughts and your innovation and your, you will patent it. But you said if somebody else observes this video, watches this video and would love to work on this module of bringing happiness and joy to the mother and child that would really bring happiness across the world. So you're a very large hearted person. I really, as you said, somebody should solve the problem, no matter yes. who it is. I want someone yes. to solve the problem yes. Yes. to reduce the burden of uh, people, of the yes. mother, of the child. Maybe that's a very nice way. You have noble thoughts and noble deeds as well, sir. Thank you. Man. Thanks so much. So uh, are you alone or you do you have a team with you who works with you? Yeah, yeah, we have a big team. Like uh, we have fifteen to twenty member team uh, who are working on all all these products. That's really nice. That's really very nice and innovative. It really gives us joy to know that there are people like this and uh, to give devote your time to innovation. It's not just one or two hours. I think it takes a long time to sit down and to put your thoughts and ideas and to you know uh, you have to have. Oh, what do you how could I put that in the right way? No, trials. Is, yeah. Trials. Yeah, yeah, it take typically takes six months of time frame, minimum. Yes. So you do uh, idea, talk to the customer, document it, get the feedback from the customer, uh, working on human-centric approach. Typically it takes six month time frame to find if this works or not. And then you iterate the process. Yes, sir. We thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with us today. And we wish you all the best. And we'd love many of the people to join hands together with our special celebrity, Sendal Kumar Murugeshan from Madurai, Tamil Nadu, India. You could also connect with him and you could share your thoughts and views, bond together and build a beautiful world and innovate many things for the better betterment of mankind. Yes, sir. We'd like to thank you today for your time and we have this, we'll take a small break for about five to 10 minutes and join back. My dear friends, this was part one about his professional, professionalism and his professional work. We'll be joining back again to know more about him on his personal space. Join us friends in another 10 minutes. Thank you for staying with us. Stay blessed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much.